Good morning and welcome to today's webinar. Today's presentation provides the insight needed to help the statutory reporting team coordinate a transparent, effective, and efficient annual reporting cycle. Our host and knowledge expert is Mike Pilch, Managing Director at Olithia. Please feel free to submit questions during this webinar through the chat module below and we will make time at the end of the presentation to address them. Mike? Thank you, Haley. Okay, so this is Mike Bilch. Uh, for a little bit about me, I am based in New Jersey. I'm a managing director with, here at Olithia. I've been with Olithia for about two and a half years. Uh, most of my career was in traditional accounting and finance roles. A good portion of that career was in the insurance industry. And what we're gonna speak about today is really something that I'm passionate about. And <clears throat> I led that, that organization through a lot of process change resulting in um, substantial benefits. Most recently, as a VP of Accounting and Investments of a global insurance and reinsurance company in New York, where I led the gap in stack consolidation and reporting teams, as well as various management reporting and analytics. During that time, I've also led the implementation of several Hyperion tools that helped us streamline our process and, and really ultimately drive change to the organization. As far as today, we're going to chat about the statutory reporting solution that we have at Olympia. We'll start out with some background on statutory reporting. Then we'll move through some common challenges that I, ex I experienced and others can relate to. Then we'll dig into the solution. And finally, we'll have a Q&A and close out the webinar. So for the annual reporting process, it's, it's followed the NAC, which is the governing body of the insurance companies. So the, the reporting calendar starts in March with the filing date of March 1st for the annual statement, the risk-based capital, the actual opinion, interrogatories, and supplements. Now, while that's the filing date, the process and preparation of the documentation starts well before then, sometimes as early as December, based on availability. On April 1st, there are additional uh, exhibits, additional supplementals, the management discussion analysis, as well as interrogatories. That process continues through to May, with the annual combined being filed on May 1st. In the middle of this, you've got the Q1 quarterly on May 15th, and that, that followed up by the annual audited financial report, as well as accountants' letters of qualification. Ultimately, it's a lengthy process with many dependencies and activities that support this entire, uh, entire cycle. <clears throat> so as far as why statutory reporting matters, as insurance is regulated, <clears throat> it's monitored closely by governing bodies. It's to validate that companies are solvent and can handle future claims to make sure they're protecting the insureds. When you look at these reports that we're gonna talk about, they provide insight and measures. For measures, you learn about the business, what they write and insure, any special programs or protective measures such as capital mo or tax remodeling or investment strategy. For key accounting, you'll understand what the investments, derivatives, reserves, or any off-balance sheet arrangements as well as other topics that materially impact the financial statements. For risks, <clears throat> how does a company protect itself against changes in interest rates or potential market volatility? Any kind of material loss events, such as catastrophes or any, any such measure, as well as any exposure to MGAs or TPAs, which are many general agents or third party administrators who write in business on behalf of the insurer. And ultimately, you're going to focus on the outlook, any concentrations or exposures that might exist, whether it's investment on the investment portfolio side with investment grade investments or duration of the investment portfolio, and at what the core business writes. So is there a focus on home and auto? Is there a focus on certain lines of reinsurance or certain lines of life products? Ultimately, you're going to understand the performance of the organization and the solvency of that organization, making sure the liquid, they have the liquidity that's adequate to pay future claims. For providing insight, these reports are required for regulators to evaluate the potential risk of inability to handle claims, as I mentioned before, to evaluate rating agencies for credit quality, and for counterparties to evaluate if they want business or want to do business with the insurance company. All three of this leads to understanding sustainability, the impact of market conditions, and the impact of material loss events. 
So today we're going to focus on three areas of the overall annual reporting process. <clears throat> that is the footnotes, the annual statement, which, is, which again I said was uh, filed on March 1st. Management discussion analysis, or the MDNA, which is filed on April 1st. And the annual audit financial report that is filed on June 1st. All repeatable processes, or should be repeatable processes, in a solution like we have. As far as the common challenges that I, I saw and lived through, I, we find that many are still using Excel and Word to manage their process. That requires manual roll forwards of both dates and financial values. It's challenging to maintain. There's updates to formats, there's updates to notes, there's updates to some of the disclosures for different columns or rows that might be required. A couple of years ago, there was an update to adding additional cat catastrophe disclosures that obviously required a lot of a lot of maintenance, a lot of updates. <clears throat> Those updates and maintenance can become unwieldy as a result of that. The calendar is obviously many times in Excel. It has dates and responsible parties broken down at a detailed level as needed. The dates are understood, the dates are validated, the dates are approved, but many times they're not maintained. They're not followed, except for the filing date, which is critical. So you're constantly chasing people for sign off. You're constantly chasing people for where they are in their process, making sure the updates are being made adequately to the documentation. You're knocking on doors or holding meetings, as well as sending many, many follow up emails uh, to make sure sign off is done appropriately. Because as you get to March 1st, or April 1st, or May 1st, you're looking to make sure it gets to the printer in time so you can distribute copies as needed to the counterparties, the risk rating agencies, as well as <clears throat> governing bodies. The process around reviewing these documents is commonly clerical, it's email driven. You're dealing with this on a nightly basis, send out emails with updates whether it's status, as far as where things stand, how much is completed, asking questions, clarifying points, updating bullets. There's no tracking from a clear or crystal clear perspective. The audit trail is a, mainly a pile of old drafts that are sitting on, on my desk or sitting in someone else's cubicle. It lacks version control from the standpoint of there are many times I would have someone knock my door and they'd have a draft for me, or they'd drop it off my desk, it had handwritten notes, and it's related to a draft that was sent out two weeks earlier, or a week earlier. Overall, it's not efficient. It doesn't provide the level of consistency that's needed for the process. It's highly time consuming as you're reconciling between what's been updated and what hasn't been, how to track items. And it's high risk for errors. As you have verbiage that needs to tie out to tables, and they don't foot. The accountability is not clear. There are many times where I'd have an actuary talk at my door, who's a junior, not the person who's ultimately accountable, that would have updates. Then that would be followed up by the, the senior VP of actuary checking in and asking where this, this update came from, or where this comment came from. There's no workflow, it's not a sound process. The process for transparency is not there. It lacks an understanding of what was changed, who changed it, why it was changed, were questions answered, were questions answered uh, substantially enough, who answered the questions, who closed the items, and who ultimately is preparing the document. It answers, doesn't answer who did what and when, what was updated, and who reviewed the document. And ultimately, it doesn't provide clarity into who signed off and when they signed off. Now, I've touched on many of these items you know, earlier. The review is clunky. It's inefficient and it's not consistent. It, really it lacks the repeatability that should exist. It's not collaborative. As I mentioned, people are not working together as a team. Comments or review cycles are not adequately monitored. And the process is highly driven by email, meetings, and other, kind of, other kinds of traffic. There's no security. There's no abil ability to, to control sensitive data, whether it's a business combination, an off-balance sheet arrangement, 
dividends or other natures that need to be disclosed or maintained by a secure group that you don't want either hitting the printer, you know, on, uh, it's commonly shared within the cubicles, or being put in the hands of the wrong person. Overall, it's very cumbersome for reconciliation process, you know, trying to, you know, like I said, tie out tables to verbiage, try to make sure that the content between notes ties out and is adequately accounted for. So we're gonna move on to the solution. And with that solution, we're, gonna, we're look, going to look at several key areas. The first being the process. Within the process, you have authors, reviewers, and signers. The author is basically the person that prepares the document. They handle those roll forwards of the dates and financial values. They handle the updates to the notes or additional disclosures are needed. The reviewers are those that are also updating content, but they're updating the content once, that, once the availability of the financials are there. They're providing commentary. They're validating the comments that are there. They're validating the data that's there. And they ultimately have the sign off. Those are the final approvers before this goes off to the printer. You can align the calendar of each one of these phases to that of your organization. So as I know that I've got to get to, in this example, March 1st, with the financial, uh, the footnotes, the, the audit statement or annual statement, I've got to align those, the preparer or the author phase to a point in time that exists. For this example, we're anticipating closing out the author phase come January 24th. Additionally, you can add on review section or re review phases. Do you do a nightly review or do you do a more structured, you know, weekly review? You can add reviews as needed if there are areas that need to be you know, highlighted or reviewed in more detail. You can also add additional reviewers. Maybe VP of accounting needs to get involved in a, in a business combination discussion or other areas. Additionally, you have roles and responsibilities. You have the owners who are part of the author phase, part of the reviewer phase as well. You have reviewers that are supposed to be assigned as well as signers. They're part of the workflow. <clears throat> Additionally, you have the concept of the viewers. Those viewers are not part of your workflow, but they can actually provide content. They can provide comments. They can be involved in the process. They're not receiving the emails and alerts that the others that are part of the workflow are. For security, let's first talk about docklets. The docklet represents a portion of the overall document. It's like a slice of, it could be a note, it could be part of the disclosures. It's to align security to that of the size of the overall document itself. That size of the docklet is determined by the organization. In this example, we're talking about footnote 5A, which is the mortgage loans, including mezzanine real estate loans. But we could have that slice of that docklet represent all of note 5, which is the investment note. It could have a portion of that note. It could have more than just that note. It's really based on the organization, how they want to set their security and how they want to assign people to the process. So you define security specific to each document as reviewers, as the authors, reviewers, and reviewers. It controls, like I mentioned before, the sensitive information and ending. You can also align accountability to review and timeline. So in this case, we have two reviewers. We can actually reduce the reviewers later on in the site if we want to. It eliminates unnecessary content updates. So for example, do you want the vice president of tax making updates to the investment footnotes? Or do you want the head of actuary making updates to the, the tax footnote? Ultimately what this does is reduces hard copies, distributions to the wrong people, and having content updated that should not be updated, which actually causes more cycles and more reconciliation. And again, getting back to the viewers again, you, this is all above part of the workflow, but the viewers are not. They still have access, they're still able to provide content and content, but they're not part of the actual workflow itself. So you can have people involved in the process that could be overall overarching the process, looking at the document as a whole, but not actively involved to the point of the workflow. As far as repeatability, you have the ability to connect to sources, which reduces risks for misstatement or any kind of updates that happen to financials. You have variables that are updated across the document. In this case, you got dates. You also have financial values as well. You can see where in the document those, vari or those variables are referenced. So in this case, the bonds has 23 references to December 31st. And you can also see as far as financial updates or date updates. 
as those updates are made, they're going directly to the document. You're not seeing reference or code. You're able to embed tables for seamless uh, roll forward process for prior years or, or period data. You can also see available sources if there are other uh, embedded content that you want to add to a certain note or docklet. You can also reference the tables to the verbiage. So they're eliminating all that reconciliation that's needed in the, the manual process. Ultimately, those references can be showed in, as a scaled number. They can be shown as whole dollars, they can be shown as millions, or they can be shown as billions, or other measures. So again, eliminating the manual nature and the error-prone activities that exist many times today. For accessibility, you've got two opportunities to access content. One is Microsoft Word, so it has a typical flow that many people are accustomed to. You also have access from the web, where, and all changes and comments are live from both access points. Additionally, for tables, you have access through Word, where you can actually reference it back to Excel. But you also have access to the footnotes through the web, where you can access Excel and, and update, make updates and look at the data. There are controls around checking in and checking out to manage content. So as you make updates, you have to check it out. And as you're done with that update, you have to check it back in. So you have that control in place. And as we're going to go through this process, you'll understand there's also a trail that's associated with that. For collaboration, I can see my comments, I can see a teammate's comments, or I can see all comments. I can also check the comments and provide commentary to it. I can post to a comment, I can also close a comment, or I can post and leave it open. That electronic tail, uh, trail I just spoke about can be done at a single comment level or a more detailed level at the doc level where you can see open comments at a review cycle level, as well as comments that are closed. You can also see the progress made during the process. I can see that <clears throat> at the review cycle, you can see the comments that are open. So for instance, if you look at the summary, there's one comment and that comment is open. But if you go down below to investments, there are three comments open, up four comments in total. You can see what review cycle you're in, and how much has been completed in the overall review cycle. You can also see who's reviewing the document and what the timeline is for completion of that, of that review cycle, which is January 31st, 2020. I can also compare to prior versions of review. So in this case, we only have two reviews set up in this, this instance. I can compare review two to review one. So I can see those differences, see the updates that are made, and understand what the impact is the overall document. Now, I talked before about version control. Since it's a live document, it's electronic, you reduce the version issues, dealing with older versions that might exist and updates being made to those older versions. This document's live, so all the changes that are made are there and can be monitored on a, on a quick basis or immediate basis. As far as workflow, when I log into the solution, I know what I have open from incomplete tasks or messages, as well as active reporting packages. I can actually go and click on my, my incomplete tasks, and there's a hyperlink that will bring me to that task for completion or review. I can also access my messages, and similar to what was done with the task, I can click on the hyperlink and go to that report package to deal with any kind of follow-up items that I need to handle. <clears throat> Additionally, as the phase opens, as tasks are commenced and as tasks are overdue, there's email notification that gets sent out, making sure those follow-ups are done by the, by the system as opposed to by a person or being manually done. Just you can review status, like I mentioned before. I can see how many comments are in a review cycle, how many comments are open, who's reviewed the document, who still is open. As this, in this case, you can see that there's one comment overall that's been prepared, that comment's been closed. There's been two people that have a completed review, and one person is still pending. Additionally, on a more detailed level, I can see who is, what process has been started within the author phase, anything that's in process, anything that's been submitted, approved, or rejected, and what's been completed. So it gives me a, a level of grain to understand where we are in the process and understand clearly and define exactly where we are to executive management. Additionally, like I mentioned before, 
when you talk about review comments and be able to see that trail, be able to understand who was making comments, who was responding to comments, and who was closing comments, you can go back to each review cycle and clearly define who did what and when and see what the answers were. It's an easy reference back, back as opposed to going to hard copies and handwritten notes. As far as transparency and audibility, by document, I can track the versions. <clears throat> I can see what the file reference is, who checked it in last, and when it was checked in last. I can also see the history of edits. I can see who updated embedded content or variables and when it was done. There's a timestamp associated with it. For embedded comment, content, I can see what's been embedded in that specific docklet. I can also see available sources that could be additionally added if needed. For variables, I have those that are used and where they're used in the document, how many times, as well as any source items. So again, going back to the embedded content, see if I can source it and automate that process of, of tables to financial uh, amounts within the verbiage itself. And as I showed around the, the comments several times before, you can see comments in the, in the review process and in the trail of those comments, if they're closed, if they're open, what the responses were, to find clarity. Ultimately, it, it provides that audit trail to understand what was done, when it was done, and who performed the activity. That could be updates to the financial statements, that could be updates to the notes, that could be updates to many different things within, within the document as you prepare it. These are items that obviously were not common in your manual process or, or many times in some other uh, instances today. This also provides that segregation of duties that you don't have necessarily in a, a manual environment. You know who your preparers are, who your viewers are, who your signatories are. And additionally, as I mentioned before, your viewers. Those viewers that are not part of the workflow, but ultimately they're providing comments, they're providing their expertise and knowledge, and ultimately digging into, this, into the deliverable. So the benefits, it's efficient in rolling forward prior periods. You can add content fairly easily. And you can manage that content. It's a clean process and it's driven. It's collaborative in that you, you can be involved in the prepare, preparation process to provide comments, review, decline, approve, as well as the review process where there's commentary. People are commenting, people are engaging with each other. You know who and what was done. It's really define your engagement in the solution. It's transparent for audits. It aligns accountability and it provides insight. There's no flipping through hard copies and, and handwritten notes. And it really defines exactly where you are in the process. You can clearly articulate to management what needs to be done and, and how far along you are in the process. It's secure to make sure the right people are reviewing the document and they're commenting in the right, the right areas. You're not getting those comments from the VP attacks on the investment note. It's, it's making sure the right people are involved in the process and making sure that they're actually actively engaged. <clears throat> As it's a live document, it reduces your typical errors of representing data within tables and verbiage, making sure everything's live, making sure everything's updated. There are many times in the past where we get far into February and find that a number wasn't footing properly or a number wasn't brought forward properly. Again, it eliminates the versioning issues. You know, as it's a live document, the updates and changes of tables are made and it's live. You can see those changes instantly within the solution. It reduces those maintenance issues that you read the formatting and dealing with tables, whether well, it's added columns, added rows, or even added disclosures that are required. You know, everything's <clears throat> with single repository for all our associate artifacts, everything's under one roof, everything's in one place. You know where you can get to the data. You know where you can get to the workflow. You know where you can see what's open and what's still outstanding. As far as from the printing aspect of this, it's green from the standpoint that it's eliminating printing. It eliminates the cost associated with purchasing paper and ink because it's electronic, because it's in a single solution. So I hope you found today insightful. I hope uh, you're able to get some that was helpful for you. Uh, thank you all for your time, and I'll pass it over to you, Haley, at this point. Thank you, Mike, for that presentation. Um, please feel free to submit any questions that you may have at this moment. 
in the chat box below. And alternatively, you can email your questions to infosolutions at alicia.com and we will provide an email response to you. Visit our YouTube channel to review recordings of our previous webinars, including this one. We hope that you have gained insight today from today's webinar. Please visit our website to learn more about our upcoming webinars and follow us on social media to get alerts about upcoming events, trainings, and webinars. Our next webinar is next Tuesday, June 30th at 11 a.m. In this webinar, attendees will get the insight needed to help finance teams coordinate an effective and efficient initiative planning process leveraging Oracle Enterprise Performance Management Cloud to make it work seamlessly and to simplify initiative planning. Join us on July 14th for a special virtual event. Two of Olivia's clients from Thomas Jefferson and Moffitt Cancer Center will share their experience deploying Oracle's Enterprise Performance Management Cloud in their organizations to streamline capital portfolio planning. Attendees will hear about the challenges faced with their existing legacy and cap with, with their existing legacy capital planning process, lessons learned from implementations and recent experiences planning their full year 2021 capital budget. Visit the events page on our website for more details and to register for this and upcoming webinars. Thank you for, to our audience and to Mike for this presentation. This concludes today's webinar.